Okay, so we're going to go from a dot pattern that has curvature to a flattened image. First thing you're going to need is an image of the dot pattern, and uh, if you can threshold it so that basically you've got black and white, that's great. That's what I'm using for this example. Um, I've already run this, so let's take a look at the block diagram. You need a couple of images created. You need to be able to open that file. Uh, and in Vision Assistant, there's only a calibration step. Let's take a look at that calibration step. Um, and if you just open Image Assistant without any of that other stuff, you can drop the image in by selecting it here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, we'll just use that existing one, and we're going to make a new calibration so that you can see what the process is. Select a distortion model grid. <clears throat> There's other ones, but for the sake of making this as simple as possible, let's go with the distortion model grid. Select next. Select the image. If you needed to acquire a new image, you could. Um, it's going to try to identify the dots as well as uh, much as it can. Make sure that they're all highlighted blue and basically to do that. The reason why these aren't blue, it's because they're not circular. So let me uncheck that. And now they are all selected. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could create a region of interest around just certain um, certain areas in the image. But this image has already been cropped, so it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Okay, so going on. Next. What is the spacing? Right now, it really doesn't matter. Let's just say that that spacing was one centimeter by one centimeter. That spacing is going to be dependent on your grid pattern. Um... And then you get an idea of what's going to happen. Um, you know, I don't look at this very often. What's it say? Overlay scale, point error list. I never mess with this. But in any case, we're going back. Let's review the results. And they look like they're going to do what they're probably intended to. So next. And... That's our calibration. Um, looks like coordinate system is going to be up here in the corner. Okay, next. And so it's basically calibrated at that point. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, where does it want it? Um, actually, I've got it in the wrong place here. So projects. I guess I should have done this ahead of time. camera calibration. And we're going to call this the uh, test calibration. <clears throat> and to preview what it's going to look like, okay, it's going to look like that. Um, maybe not quite as good as the previous calibration was. I think that's because I put the region of interest around it, but you know, you get the idea. Alright, so click OK. Now what you get out of this is and when I run this, uh, come on, run this, we're, we still have the same image in the dots. To get the corrected image, take a look at the code again, you need a, what's this called? It is called iMac Correct Calibrated Image. So you pass the un corrected image that has been calibrated into the first input and you give it another input just so that it doesn't destroy your first image and that's what you get out is a calibrated and corrected image and it's not a perfectly corrected but you could probably mess with the settings until you get it correct correctly corrected and uh, what's going on inside the vision assistant that's something to look at hold on let's see we copy that and open the front panel. Yeah, fine. View, show block diagram. So all this stuff is just canned for Vision Assistant. It's basically making image backups. And this is also just 
some extra stuff. Actually, you would need this. You would need to read the calibration file. So what this says is uh, create a new image. It is a calibration image. It reads the calibration file. And then it uses, sets the calibration info. This is IMAX set calibration info. It passes the calibrated image in as the source and it passes the active image in as the destination and so the image that comes out of there has been calibrated based on the settings that are embedded in the metadata of the saved calibration file. So you would need to open it and you gotta make sure you have this read image and vision info. It's the read image with the little blue exclamation or I or whatever that is that's the one that actually reads the calibration out of the PNG file and then you need the set calibration to apply that to any future images anyway I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I don't need that one I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it because after all it's embedded inside of this and hopefully that helps you out thanks for watching